Hi everyone, Senator Jason Rarick here at the Capitol and today I want to talk to you about the issue that I'm sure is on so many people's minds around Minnesota and what is happening in the Minnesota Senate in regards to Senator Mitchell and all the charges hanging over her head right now for the break-in into her stepmother's house up in Detroit Lakes. And I know a lot of people are, there's emerging details yet, uh, new things coming out all the time. And people are really wondering what is going on. What, and for me, you know, I do believe Senator Mitchell uh, deserves due process. And I am not one who has just immediately been out there to call for her resignation. But I do believe, like when we see uh, school officials or police officers or people who serve on boards, even a f former sheriff of Hennepin County was put on administrative leave when they had charges of this serious nature hanging over their heads. And that is the same thing I believe we should follow here in the Senate. And it is the very first thing we proposed as Senate Republicans that Senator Mitchell not be allowed to vote until this has been resolved. And I've heard a number of people from Woodbury are planning to be here, people she represents, who are saying they feel just as disenfranchised by the idea that she's voting for them as being not represented at all. I think those questions are very valid and I think there are a lot of answers that need to be made before Senator Mitchell would be the deciding vote on legislation in Minnesota. We've seen over the last year and a half how many controversial things have passed through the Senate, 34 to 33. And we've also heard uh, things said um, by the majority leader, Senator Murphy, that she's been removed from her committees and that she was removed from their caucus. Clarified yesterday, she's actually only not being allowed to participate in their caucus. They have not removed her from her caucus and our committees are all done. That's not a punishment at all. There are no ramifications for her actions by either of those measures. And so that is the, another big question that we had yesterday. And ultimately, the Democrats have continued to defend her and they've allowed her to vote on the very proposals um, asking to limit her role here, which I believe is a conflict of interest. And so they're leading us to the point where if the people from Woodbury are loud we may be to the point where we would ask for her to be expelled. I still believe the proper thing to do is what we proposed first, and that is for her to abstain from voting and stay away until this has all been resolved through the courts. Then the people of Woodbury can kind of decide, do they want to do a recall vote? Is it right to call for her resignation? And we have an ethics committee hearing that uh, starts next Tuesday to start looking into these very details. Because I admit, we don't know all of the details. But the details we do know are a bit disturbing and they are very serious. And, and I know a lot of people think, well, there are other uh, legislators out there who have been charged with crimes, uh, things of that nature. This is a felony crime of violence that she was caught by police in the act of. That is a lot different than a number of these other circumstances people are talking about. So um, I just hope we can come to some resolution. There are talks about finding the things that absolutely need to be done, uh, get that done and we can do a bonding bill and be done with this legislative session. And I'm hoping that is the route we take. Um, it is the right thing to do for the people of Minnesota.